So now hopefully you have a, an environment that you can use to experiment with code. Just like you see me doing it. I copy and paste a lot and I can and I can quickly come up with uh, with certain things to try. So that's that's the plan. So this is a good playground for you to have and you have the recording of me actually installing it and everything and overcoming all, all hurdles. So I'm not I'm not trying to make it look like magic to you. You see, I'm going through the same processes that I'm expecting you to go through. This is not a homework assignment. You can still go to CPP shell, cpp.h URL, uh, and try things out over there, but uh, it's just good to have it, and especially as we move on to use multiple files for our demonstrations, uh, then this will become essential. But this is a very solid platform for you to have at home, and you can see you can install it on other platforms like Linux and Mac and, and all versions of Windows, and you'll be fine. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to our presentation uh, and continue on with the topics related with uh, functions. So we talked about the return type, we talked about the function name and, and declarations of, of the arguments, and uh, kind of silly thing is the smallest function is a, uh, a function with a name with empty set of uh, arguments and uh, an empty set of uh, uh, executable statements, right? Just an opening and closing brace. And void means that the function does not return any value. So that's the smallest function. And sometimes when you write your code, you can uh, create these uh, empty functions to, uh, to hold on to their names until uh, you get to them and write the actual code. Uh, this is um, uh, 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 an example where uh, the, uh, the seemingly uh, simple idea of having a function, making function, call, providing parameters to functions, using return statement, um, all of this is related to function, but sometimes you need functions that call each other, okay? So we have, say, we want to kind of simulate this ping pong uh, game and we want function ping to call function pong and function pong to call function ping, okay? So we want two of these uh, uh, functions uh, call each other, okay? So here's a potential uh, version of the ping pong game. Okay, so let's uh, resize it and uh, uh, I will just simply copy and paste, right? Control C and paste this into my uh, window here. I will not preserve this. I'll just copy and paste. Here's my new version of this program. Um, I want you to uh, actually uh, finish all of your uh, source files with an empty line. This is one of the strange requirements in uh, C and C++ standard that you uh, finish all of your source uh, code with an empty line. Um, many compilers will not even mention it, but I kind of routinely do that. I'll just let you know that I usually have an empty line at, at, uh, at the end of every single uh, source file that I use. Okay, that's a little strange to, uh, to remember, but uh, it's a good habit. Okay, so let's analyze this. Um, uh, let's take a look at, at, at this entire arrangement. So we have a function called ping. Uh, it does something, okay, but most importantly, it, it calls function pong. Right? And function pong uh, uh, calls back into function ping. And uh, in main, uh, a function, what happens is that the comment here says, let's play. Okay? And then it starts with ping. So it makes a call into ping. Ping does its thing, calls pong, and so forth. So that's the idea. Have three functions that do something. We'll just we'll examine what they do in a second. But uh, first, I like to like take a look at the level of these functions. And now, of course, I can save everything and go to build, right? Just, just say build this, okay? So build this and uh, again, I need to remember here to save view and uh, view logs 
because logs gives me a, a list of like you know different types of uh, logs that we can have. Uh, but here's my um, here's my output from the compiler, and here it says um, in function void ping uh, error pawn was not declared in the scope. Right, so this is our error, and it says this is the file, and this is the line of code. So you can double click on this line, and it takes you directly to the line which compiler finds to be an offending line, which it cannot deal with. So we have to resolve a problem here. So the actual error says that uh, pawn was not declared in the scope. Okay, when you deal with, with functions, what happens is that we mentioned that we can provide the entire function definition. And that entire function definition tells compiler everything about this function, except in our case, our function definition involves another function named pawn, which is located elsewhere. It could be located in the same file, or it could be located elsewhere. It could be located in a different file, okay? And even in, like in a different directory. In uh, cases like this, what we need is that compiler, uh, compiler, the, the role of the compiler is very, very, very simple. Everything that, that you're trying to use, including function calls, you have to define and declare first, okay? Which in our case, we attempted to make a call into Pong, but compiler hasn't seen it yet. It just, it's not smart enough to look a few, li few lines down and realize that it's defined there, but it's so simple that it says, no, I, I'm not really sure what this is, and I cannot, cannot compile this. Uh, in order to resolve this seemingly like almost like an artificial problem that we're having, obviously, we have all components here, but what we need to do is that we need to say pawn, and we need to do this. Uh, I'll go somewhere to the top here. Paste this in. Now look what I just pasted. I pasted the function name, I pasted the arguments, and I pasted the return type. And then I add a semicolon at the end. And I will even add a comment, which I say, these are my function prototypes. Function prototypes also known as uh, function declarations. Now, I've used the word definition. Now, this is function declaration. Function declaration does not require you to provide what function does. It only says, look, in order to call this function, all you need to know is the function name, what parameters it's taking, and what's the return type. Nothing else. You don't have to know what this function actually does internally. And this time, hopefully, if I build this again, build, and say build, this time everything's okay. Compiler is smart enough to figure out that when I say pawn, it has already seen this, uh, uh, dec uh, this uh, function prototype or function declaration, where it says, uh, this is a function, it knows that it's a function by seeing the parentheses, and it sees like this is a signature of the function that will exist somewhere else, but in order to call it, this is all you need to know, its name, its parameters, and what it returns. So it can successfully generate, uh, apparently, an instruction that makes a call into this function. And this is all that it needs in, in, in this uh, ping. Okay, so this time it compiles, and I can even say um, debug uh, uh, start, and again, let's go back to our, uh, uh, you know, our uh, include, uh, uh, include uh, CSTD lib, and add our pause call before we exit out of this. Let me close this for now. Right, so we're going to say before we before we exit, we ha we would like to have a chance to see something. So we're going to say system uh, system pause. Okay, system pause. 
let's compile again. Okay, and uh, so hopefully it compiles fine. And when I when I run it, uh, just debug uh, start start continue. You can see that what it does, uh, ping calls pong and pong calls ping, and they all print ping pong on the screen. Let me resize this one more time. Go to properties. Uh, make sure uh, quick edit mode is selected. Uh, go to um, uh, go back to properties and we'll just make it uh, friendlier so you guys can see it much better. Uh, this is good um, and I can and I can change the colors. And so this time you can see that what happens here is just it just makes some printouts right from from within each of the function call and then it returns and says the game is over. okay, good. So let's examine what this program does, right? So despite the fact that everything is like, like lots of things are happening here on top, the execution of the program begins in main function. So the program loader, which loads this program execution, largely ignores everything except main and says main will be the one that will begin execution of this program. 